one action. Okay. Hi guys, we're JCC right now, bringing you a very special episode of TWIP. Since Rafi's leaving in a bit, he's leaving for the ass end of United Kingdom. Yes. Where he's going to be living in a swamp. It's a very nice so, swamp. As a going away it's gift, we have serene. decided, me and Ahmed, we have decided that we're going to do a Spider-Man special. So as you can see, Spider-Man running in the background. We're going to be talking about three different distinct phases of Spider-Man's career. Yes. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just go phase by phase and talk about three different books today. So uh, I will start. I'll start off with Todd McFarlane's run on Spider-Man. It was called Masks. This was pretty much the second run that he was doing. Now the thing about Spider-Man is if you've ever read Spider-Man for a while, while he is the greatest character ever written in comics, and people might disagree with it, so fuck you. No, no, he's, he's, uh, no he, he is, is. he is. Yeah, good. He's a Flash fan, even he agrees, so. So, while well, he is the greatest character in superhero comics ever written, the thing about that is, and there are bad facts in the room who are disagreeing. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you sure he that's is. not a rabbit? <laughs> 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 while he's the greatest character in superhero comics ever written, Spider-Man never got his seminal story. There has never been a Dark Knight Returns. There has never been an uh, All-Star Superman. There's never been a killing joke. He does not simply have those kind of stories, that stories that transcend, you know, comic books and go into literature. Yeah. For that reason, you know, if you read Spider-Man throughout the years, it's always been about his runs. And it's always been, because Spider-Man's always been written in a very soap opera kind of way, you know, his girlfriend are troubled and his financial troubles, and his aunt may dying. He's and the a bunch superhero. of times. He is, he is. So, you know, Rafi relates, relates to Spider-Man. How do you relate to Spider-Man? Because I started reading when I was him when I was your when, age. Okay, does that dumbass. make sense? Yeah. So... I just like blue. And he just likes, you know... I, we I all love like, blue. We all love blue. So the thing about that is, he's, it's always been written in a very soap opera style. So Spider-Man is all about the runs, about the writers. And even then, if you look at it, he's never really had superstar writers writing him. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't have a Grant Morrison coming on board and writing a Spider-Man story. You have never had somebody like Wade have an extended run on Spider-Man. Or any, or anybody, or Hickman, or Fraction, or... He's always gotten pretty much being... The Heck, JMS superhero. got big writing Spider-Man. Yeah, he wasn't JMS big before wasn't him. Big, big shot before he wrote Spider-Man. Spider he got big after that, yeah. Shot. So stuff like that. So you, when you have, or when you talk about Spider-Man writers, they've always been mediocre writers, shot to stardom by Spider-Man. And one of those guys was McFarlane. Yeah. Nobody knew who he was before he started writing Spider-Man. And Masks is followed the the first the first run of his torment. Right? This torment. Is after torment. Was called yeah. torment. Yeah. Which was the after which he wrote Masks. Masks is ultraviolent. You've got Juggernaut. You've got yeah. Ghost Rider. You've got X Force and it's really really cool and there's a scene in here where he stabs Juggernaut in the eye so it's all the 90s extreme it's, stuff. it's the 90s extreme stuff it was <laughs> when you know everything was going all haywire and the hair and the punk rock and everything and the thing is the this book led to McFarlane leaving Marvel and going over to create image because he basically when he was writing this he did a scene where he's you know spider-man takes a sword and jabs it into juggernaut's eyes that scene is not in here if you follow Todd McFarlane on Facebook you'll see he sometimes puts a picture up to remind people that that is what got him to leave Marvel because they would not give him the creative freedom to do it yeah is it a great run no is it a defining run yes the reason being this is how spider-man was drawn as, a art, as an artist, McFarlane was more influential than as a writer. Yeah. This is how Spider-Man's webs were drawn for the next 30 years. And yeah, the squiggly webs webs thing, right? Yeah. yeah. The, the spaghetti, spaghetti webs. Spaghetti webs, sorry. This is how Spider-Man's legs and arms and his movement was done for the next 30 years. All because of how Todd McFarlane did it. The big eyes, McFarlane. The, the extra busy webbing all over him, McFarlane. The dark shading on him and the crosshatch, McFarlane. Yeah. This run defined what Spider-Man would look like for the next 30 years, till now that they have you know messed it up with like a number of different I don't know what reboot, yeah. yeah. So uh, Spider-Man has a number of different costumes right now. But like I said, it's very cheap. It's like $25. It's part of a seminal run in Spider-Man's history, and I would recommend anybody who is interested into knowing how the current Spider-Man came to be. Yeah, be torment's good. available here, right? Oh, we have Torment as, as well. well. So you can get Torment we have and Masks. actually reviewed before. Yeah. So we've done Torment before and we've done Masks today. Both, the, the complete both of them McFarlane are here. run is available. So anyone who wants them can get both of them Yeah, here. 25 right. bucks, which is so about 2,000 taka. So, so come and pick it up. Max. Yeah. All right, everyone. So I'm going to talk about Ultimate Spider-Man, which is pretty much the Spider-Man I've read 
pretty well. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing I've read is Brand New Day, which I'm never going to talk about in front of these guys because they ripped me a new one. Yeah. <laughs> but let's hit Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 1. So let's talk about Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 1, Power and Responsibility. Classic lines, we always associate that with Spider-Man. Yeah. And what it is is that this is not regular Spider-Man, this is from the Ultimate Universe, and this is one of the big changes that they had made around 2000, I want to say. Yeah, 2000. Uh, so around 2000. Marvel decided yeah. that the regular universe was getting too confusing, and you know they wanted new people. Ultimate Universe is Marvel's DC's new 52, essentially. And you know, so they did a lot of changes. Peter Parker is back to being 15. Uh, so yeah, so this is you know separate universe. Them trying to say, okay, if you want to read Spider-Man, come into this, which is what I did, and it's great. And this has Brian Michael Bendis's writing. And for those of you who hear my r ranting, I do not like Bendis. No. Except okay, there's nobody in this room right now excepting Zero who actually likes Bendis. So just I just putting you, it up man. <laughs> <laughs> but when he writes individual characters, he's fine, and yes. it makes sense. Like, you know, Spider-Man being quippy, all the fun stuff that I associate with Spider-Man, Bendis can do when Spider-Man's by himself. Sounds quite sad. Well, Bendis does actually write solo characters pretty well. Elias was a pretty good book. Yes. Yeah. Jessica Jones was a pretty good book. You know, Elias, Jessica Jones, same thing. Pretty good book. I think it's Scarlet that he's we writing. About the yeah, but his Iron Man's We terrible. talked about literally the same thing on our, like, third episode. Like, yeah, same dialogues. Same dialogues. Elias or thing. Iron Man and then, yeah. Bendis, he's a hack. <laughs> we don't like Bendis. Yeah. yeah. Bendis okay. is the Zack Snyder of comic no, that's Mark Millar, sorry. <laughs> no. Mark Millar actually has decent ideas. Yeah. He can't execute. Mark Millar is the J.J. Abrams of comic books. Okay, I can go with this. That's a good compare. <laughs> I live with that. Yeah. Okay. As I was saying though, so this is the beginning of Spider-Man. So we have all the classic bits and pieces of Spider-Man's origin, but tweaked to be for the millennial edition, you know? He's working for a Daily Bugle, but their website instead of the actual newspaper. And Uncle Ben has a ponytail. Oh yeah, Uncle, Uncle ben. ben had a ponytail. And the, I think this is the first time Aunt May is actually hot in a comic book. Yeah, because she isn't, you know, 60, she's like 40 something. So, hot elderly grandparents are for you, come read this. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, if you want to have a good introduction to Spider-Man, like... Still come read this. Uh, like Monazo said, you know, there's no good seminal run of Spider-Man. This is as close as it gets. But, you know, since this is an issue number one, you know, this is the first volume of the Ultimate Spider-Man run. First seven issues? Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. It helps introduce everything and you can say, hey, I've started from a number one, a new beginning, and you get to learn who Spider-Man is. Mm. So, yeah. That's and the art's pretty decent as well. Bagley. I like know, Bagley's I'm art. I'm not a Bagley fan. But I like the Bagley's art, art in this. So it's Marvel House style. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It's serviceable. Everything is fine. So from the starting of um, where Ultimate Spider-Man starts, we're going to go to the end of where Sp Ultimate Spider-Man Ultimate Death of Spider-Man. Well, Ultimate Spider-Man, Death of Spider-Man. This is the omnibus that collects, uh, you know, the basic end. Like, uh, this collects Ultimate Comics 15, which was the end of Volume 2 of Ultimate Spider-Man, right? And then Volume 1 resumes where we get 150 to 60. There's the Ultimate Comics Avengers versus Ultimate. Basically, the entire uh, Death of Spider-Man, which had... This is the death of Peter Parker. Yes, the death of Peter Parker. Not the death of Spider-Man, because as we all know, Miles Morales comes on and takes on the mantle of Spider-Man, right? Uh, the reason I love this story so much is because... Uh, you know, it actually, I can remember the scene where uh, uh, Peter gets shot, yeah. right? Peter gets shot and the cat picks him up. Yeah. That was one of the one of the best Spider-Man panels of all time. Yeah, it was like Cap amazing. Picking Cap picking him up. And he says, you're going to be the greatest of us all. Because, you know, this, money, the death didn't only impact, you know, his supporting characters, it impacted the entire Ultimate Universe. Everyone, from S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, to the Ultimates, to the New Avengers, everyone was hurt by this. And the funeral was so huge, because, you know, yeah, is the secret anti-God the revealed, scenes, right? The, like, huge funeral scenes, and the like, cars, and, 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 and all the heroes came in. Yeah. In fact, I think his Tony death for in that. Peter Parker yeah. was... Uh, death of Peter Parker was done better than death of Clark Kent. <laughs> <laughs> right, and there was another scene during the funeral, which really got to me. It was in Ultimate Fallout, I think, uh, when... You know, Aunt May is walking up to uh, the church, yeah. and there's a kid, and like she, when a little girl comes up to Aunt May and uh, thanks her because Spider-Man saved her, right? So was, generic Bendis shit. Yes, yeah, generic Bendis. But it was still nice. It was a really nice scene, and like it's a good death. It, it, it's a good death. It actually made me cry, and even though I may seem mopey, I don't really cry that much because I don't care. But this death actually hurt me to a certain amount, right? And okay, this okay. is the best way to end it. Rafi being Rafi. Yeah. God damn it. So, so Rafi, you recommend this heartily, from what I understand? Yes. I because you're, you, you're very tough to story. interpret? Yes, I'm very tough to interpret. I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm a very gritty guy, you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very dark and gritty. Are, very DC. 
<laughs> I'm gonna die in like a minute, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna die. <laughs> Rafi is saying that it's not unbeatable score goal, but it's a pretty good story. Yes. So this collects um, Ultimate Comics Spider Man 15 and, and 150 to 160. 160. Basically, Ultimate the end. Ultimate Avengers vs New Ultimates 1 to 6. Ultimate Comics Fallout 1 to 6. Right. Um, Actually, this this basically ties in with the event, right? In the sense that they give the whole event. It also collects yeah, the whole okay. Ultimates vs yeah. New Avengers, right? right. Uh, Ultimate uh, Avengers. I've, I've not kept up with the Ultimate thing. Does the end of Spider Man, you know, kind of signal the end of the Ultimate Universe at that point? No. no then then Miles Morales for like three years, four oh, years, oh, uh, five years. Yeah. Yeah. Miles Morales. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> so, the, the so yeah, the Hispanic. So this has the entire kid. event that's collected. This is like seventy-five dollars. It's a pretty thick comic, if you can see. Uh, pretty sure there's like a bonus artwork and everything in there and it's covers. Heavier than most comics this size. It's yeah. really weird because yeah. Marvel's really bad about the page quality. Something a little heavier page than usual. So um, the artwork's fantastic. It's got some great stories in it. Just look I at the cover. Just look at the cover. Uh, look at the cover. Unless your name is Bruce, and you know, I highly recommend you to come and. Yeah, I'm not sure name is yeah, take us some. Our field. Which I'm going to pick this up. <laughs> the store. It's 6k. And it's more than $15. It's more than $15. It's, more than $15. it's it's $15. yeah, I know it might hurt you guys but you know, like yeah, comics. I, I might know it's just about to have you in your pockets, but yeah. you know, people who actually take $15 is not a lot of money. Come pick come pick this up, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, from next week onwards, we won't have Rafi with us, which is a so bonus because I don't even know what I'm going to say. We'll uh, have the time. Keep following us on Twitter for more news about what happens in comics and in JTC <laughs> in the Bangladesh gig community in general. Yes. So see you guys later. Later. Okay. Bye.